I'm your host, Erica from Crypto Soul. The Erica Show is an effort to stay connected with the builders in this space, despite our current limitations. So through the Erica Show, we can hear from important industry players like the interview today, as who we haven't really seen or heard from in a while. So I'll say it one more time in Korea, Korean. 안녕하세요, 크립토 소울 에리카입니다. 에리카 쇼는 줌 인터뷰를 통해서 대표적인 프로젝트 리더들과 소통하는 기회를 제공하려고 만들게 되었고 오늘이 바로 첫 인터뷰입니다. So this is my very, very first interview at the show. I'm very excited, as you can see, and I'm wearing the swag as you <laughs> back from 2017. Remember the stage. Yeah, an honor to introduce our special interviewee, Peng, uh, who is CEO of Cosmos and Tendermint. So, Peng, hey, it's so great to see you in such a long time. How, how long has it been? It's been like three years? <laughs> it's been a while, yeah. I think last time we met in Shanghai, right? Yeah. For one of the, the Wangxiang blockchain, blockchain I, events. I remember. I remember. A lot has happened since then, right? <laughs> a lot has happened. Yeah, so much has happened with blockchain <laughs> that. Exactly. It's on the road to IBC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. And of course, congratulations on your new role as Tender at Tender Mint as CEO. It's quite a jump from your previous role. Uh, you were Chief Design Officer. How has it been going for you? Well, it's been really busy, right? <laughs> it's been a big change for me. Previously, I was only concerned with the, you know, visual design, front-end development, and, and how I can best you know, promote Cosmos visually and in terms of user experience. But now it's, it's quite a bit more than that, right? I've taken a step back and now you know, everyone in the company reports to me so there's a lot that I don't have a lot of experience in, you know, like partnerships and uh, the details of the engineering team. You know, I am not uh, a core protocol engineer like, like Jay was, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot I have to learn. And um, the team has been extremely supportive. And, you know, I've managed to have really great relationships with them through this transition process. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I must, I can imagine how how huge the role must be. Um, currently, I'm sure there's many things to handle, but what are some things that you're currently working on uh, or planning to work on uh, in the near future to improve the company? Yeah, I can give some sort of high level bullet points, right? The most important one, like with everyone else in the ecosystem, we're supporting what we can to make sure the Stargate upgrade to the Cosmos SDK, right, mm -hmm. goes through without a hitch. And later on to make sure the Stargate upgrade reaches the hub and, you know, we get IBC on the hub that everyone's so excitedly hoping for. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Um, a couple of things that are um, further down the roadmap are shared security. So we're really interested in sharing some of the hub security with other chains that may want to connect to it mm -hmm. um, to sort of bootstrap the networking effect for those chains. And another project we're, we're working on is um, finding a partner and uh, building a DEX for the hub, oh. right? Mm -hmm. In a similar vein to Uniswap, we're considering, you know, what would be, you know, the best features that we want to have on the hub, and we're working with um, a development team to bring that to the hub as a proposal, and to see if all the atom holders are interested in, in making this happen. Wow. And of course, lastly, um, which we've just announced, right, is Starport. Um, Starport's in the very early stages, but uh, it's already, you know, the easiest way to build a blockchain from scratch, and we hope to make it even better more featureful um, over the next coming months. Wow, <laughs> big bullet points, right? <laughs> um, and there's been a lot of structural changes internally. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, talk about that. And um, mm -hmm. we're, what's your opinion on that? How has it been going? And how, is, how do you see it going in the future? Um, because there's been many changes and people don't know much about it. Um, so could you tell us more about that as well? Yeah, so, you know, earlier this year, there were a lot of disagreements internally and uh, the team did break up into, into smaller parts. Mm -hmm. And um, a large part, you know, a lot of the core protocol engineers went to Interchain GmbH, which is an entity funded by the ICF in Germany. Mm -hmm. And they're probably the, you know, the best team um, known for Cosmos SDK development, IBC development, um, and, and Tendermint core. Mm -hmm. And at Tendermint, the company, right, um, we're looking to rehire. So we're, we're building up an engineering forces again, but we still have core protocol engineers within the company. So, you know, they're, they're teaching our new engineers how to use the SDK, how to build on top of the SDK. And we look forward to working, you know, with many of the former people who have left and also with everyone on the ecosystem, you know, who are building on the SDK and, and improving that together as a community instead of, you know, having everything in one team. 
you know, it can be argued that this decentralization of core development is actually good for the ecosystem because, you know, having multiple teams that work together, collaborate together, and also in some cases compete with each other to implement the best features for the hub um, makes it much more resilient and uh, makes sure that the project will keep going even if there's no central entity, you know, leading all development. It's more, it's actually a sentiment. I mean, it's, it's distributed and risk averse. So I guess it's a more better fit for the team. And I've seen like on the telegram rooms and everything that the discussions mm -hmm. are more active than before. It seems like, I mean, the core members are still there. They're still contributing. Right. So I was yeah. really impressed by the current like changes and the, you know, current development. So I think it's <laughs> actually really great. Like a lot of the, you know, development chat used to happen internally, right. Mm -hmm. On a mm -hmm. company slack only. And I think it's great that these discussions are happening more openly now, you know, on the Cosmos community discord, on the various telegram channels that have been started. This is, you know, really the next step towards decentralizing development. That's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have, I've seen you like in, back in 2017, but like, I was always curious about like where you come from and like what you, your background is. Um, <laughs> and since you do with the CEO role as well, it's like, can you tell me more about like how you came uh, into Tendermint and about your previous background and just how you fell into the blockchain rabbit hole <laughs> in general? Yeah, so before Tendermint, you know, I was working freelance. I was a freelance web designer and web developer. I did that for about six years. I had various clients all around the world. Um, and I really enjoyed doing design, right? Mm -hmm. And I started getting into Photoshop when I was like 12. And uh, wow. I took that, right? And then learned front end development. And then I learned JavaScript. Wow. And then I did a bit of everything front end related, right? Um, so I'm really passionate about user experience and just making sure that whatever we're building is what people care about and want. I think mm -hmm. for that for me is more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got into crypto as an investor, I guess, early on. Um, I heard about Bitcoin when it was uh, $1 um, <laughs> in 2011. And I was like, what is this? What is this thing? And then I ignored it for years. <laughs> um, I got in much later, actually. So that, that was unfortunate. But um, yeah. I think everyone else has also that, um, yeah. that same experience. <laughs> and uh, actually, I met Jay, not in prison, but uh, I worked with his company, his startup, in 2010. Uh -huh. I was in SF at the time. Uh -huh. And they were working on team productivity software, you know, um, it was called I Done This. It was a tool that what the web app meant to help your team become more accountable by checking off every day, you know, several bullet points that they did for the day mm. and to keep that chain going over the course of months, you know, so, you know, the entire team would be more accountable. That project seemed to be going well. And then sort of out of the blue in, in 2015, late 2015, Jay reached out to me via email and was like, hey, you know, I'm working in this blockchain space and we think there's like a lot of potential here. Do you want to join us as the designer? And, and I was like, okay, sure, I'll, I'll try this out, right? I was always extremely interested in blockchain, but, you know, I felt like I didn't have any sort of core protocol knowledge and uh, it was pretty intimidating to get into, you know, blockchain development from the perspective of someone like me who, you know, is only experienced with JavaScript mm -hmm. and front end stuff. So the most I was able to do up until this point was, you know, just advertise my services on, on sort of crypto job boards and, and try to see if anyone is interested in paying me in Bitcoin or ETH or something. So I was like, this is cool, so cool. I can get into a company that's actually building, you know, some core infrastructure. So yeah, I joined in late 2015 and uh, I've been there, I guess, nearly five years now. So you were, you were the first employee, was, were you the first employee at Tendermint? I was the first employee. Ooh, <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah, I was the first employee and like the fourth person in, in the team. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, wow. So it's been a long journey for you. And um, I mean, the team yes. has been ongoing steadily, I guess, for a while. I mean, especially for a blockchain team, it's, it's been really strong, I think, over the years. Um, and I've also witnessed that as well. Um, what do you see like as the the strength of the team in general? Like uh, I know many members of the team, but like they're, you know, super smart and everything. But what do you see internally from your perspective of what the 
synergy, I mean, the benefits of the team are, what the advantages are. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the team is incredibly passionate and hardworking. And I think the one thing that sets apart our team from a lot of other teams is that we're always shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, so every team within the company, you know, every project within the company, we always aim to have something that we're working on and that we're delivering and shipping to our community, you know, whenever we can. And I think that way, you know, we're able to get more feedback from the community on the tools that we're building, you know, the events we're hosting and such. And it's helpful for us to improve upon that, you know, year after year and make a more solid, you know, a more easy to use experience, a better experience for everyone involved. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I felt as well. But um, as I like, you know, COVID-19 has like struck all of us, but um, I'm sure Cosmos and Tendermint, like the team itself has also been affected a little by it at least. Um, like how do you deal with the, the limitations that the team has? Because like many, there's many lacking of events. Um, there's no like, you know, physical meetings um, going on. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome that? How do you currently overcome that? And uh, is there any way that you try to make it effective, the team? Yeah, this is a big topic. Um, you know, fortunately, as, as a mostly remote organization, it hasn't affected us too much. Mm -hmm. right? We're still able to just stay home yeah. Instead of going to our offices, we just stay home and work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, while some people on our team have gotten COVID, they've all, you know, recovered. Uh, oh. So it's been pretty good for us. Uh, pretty lucky for us, actually. Yeah. Uh, I guess on, on a more high level, how this has affected our team is that we are no longer hiring just for hubs, right? So in the mm -hmm. past, we used to have hubs around SF, uh, Berlin, mm -hmm. Germany, and also Toronto in Canada. Well, we're now opening up hiring to anyone in the world. Wow. And uh, yeah, one of our new policies regarding compensation is we're also trying to pay everyone on the same level. Not, um, not the same, right, amount right. for everyone, but um, we target the, a certain percentile of the SF market pay. And then oh. we give that pay to everyone around the world. No matter if oh. they're in, you know, if they're in Korea, if they're in China, if they're in the UK wow. or Eastern Europe, <laughs> we give them all the same pay <gasps> because we believe that we want to pay people based on, you know, what they bring to the company and not where they live in the world. Oh, wow. That's a great, like, that's a great advantage for people like me, <laughs> for example, I'm living in Asia and it's, it's, it has a very good, big gap between SF and mm -hmm. like what they pay in there Asia. There really is. And I feel like it's this sort of inequality that makes it, um, you know, it can be awkward when you have team meetups and uh, especially mm. when you have managers and, and ICs, they're on, you know, different sort of pay structures because they live in different parts of the world. Um, I didn't want that to exist in the company. I wanted mm. everyone to be sort of equally valued at, at a level that they would get paid in, you know, um, in SF, for example. And uh, I wanted to make sure that we're able to get, you know, new talent coming to the company with that same sort of expectation from them and from us that they'll perform to this level. Wow, that's a, that's a great uh, new, like news that I want to, like, I really um, am excited to hear about because it's a new thing that I've never heard about. Um, and uh, I, Yeah, I believe a lot of other companies are exploring ideas like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a much harder change for larger companies. Right. Um, but I believe like, you know, paying everyone to the same scale is the easiest way to solve this problem on the more straightforward way. And you don't have people like, let's say you, you work at Facebook and Facebook lets you work from home. And then you're like, wait, I'm gonna move out of SF now. And then, you know, Facebook has to figure out how much to sort of lower their pay because now they don't live in SF. And um, I think these sort of complicated calculations and the sort of gamification by the employee to be like, okay, now I'm gonna run a VPN that, that shows I'm in SF still, but I'm actually living, you know, in the Midwest somewhere. Yeah. I don't want stuff like that to be, you know, something that the company has to deal with or the employees have to have to play around with. So I think just putting everyone on that same level as a baseline is where we want to go. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, so team wise, I, I believe like, I, I can see it's doing really well, um, despite these hard times. And also the ecosystem yeah. in Asia has been really strong, like it's been steady uh, and you put a lot of effort and investment into like Asia, like China and Korea specifically as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've 
you know, I've dealt with, I've witnessed all the, you know, support for the Cosmos community in Korea. And uh, I mean, even now, this interview was like uh, really anticipated among the Korean community. Um, is there, I'm sure, I mean, we cannot fly physically into Korea right now, but are there any like upcoming plans or, uh, or I don't know, up later plans on how to grow the community in Asia even more than what it is today? Yeah, you know, I really appreciate our community in Asia. You know, I am Asian. I was born in China. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved to the US when I was five, right? Mm. And, uh, and my wife is from Malaysia. Right. And um, we have a really great partnership with IrisNet, you know, mm -hmm. with Harriet. Yes. being there as the CEO and helping us spread the, the word of Cosmos in China. Mm -hmm. And we have great teams, you know, working with Cosmos Tech in Korea that I would love to get to know better, right? Mm -hmm. Like the moment I'm able to do so, I'd love to fly to Korea and, and meet people there. Um, you know, my wife is a lot of, is a fan of Korean dramas and Korean <laughs> food. So recently we just finished watching, what is it? Um, it's okay <laughs> to be not okay. Oh. And, uh, we thought that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> And uh, I think Crash Landing on You was also like a recent favorite of ours, actually. Oh, wow. You're, you're um, better than me in terms of K-Dramas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 so we have fun watching that, watching those shows on Netflix. And um, <laughs> we would love to come visit and, and spread the word of Cosmos and help, you know, community support and uh, to fund initiatives that, you know, bring Cosmos to more people across Asia. Yeah. But of course, COVID, um, we're sort of canceling all in-person events until yep. the end of the year, and then mm -hmm. we're going to reevaluate early next year and see what we can do. Right. And as a person that, you know, uh, who hosts events uh, in Asia, it's been very um, disappointing to me because you know, I've been wanting to host Hack, Hack Adam mm -hmm. again uh, this year, um, and that couldn't happen. So I'm really disappointed. I'm in Vietnam, by the way, if you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I've heard. How is Vietnam right now? Vietnam is actually relatively quite safe. Um, it's not mm -hmm. as you know detrimental as like Korea even, um, it's, but it's secluded. So we cannot fly out of the country. <laughs> right. We cannot really go anywhere. Um, so I'm just kind of stuck here, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's a very interesting community. It's not like structured as Korea is in terms of like the, the blockchain community, but still I think there's a lot of potential in terms of developers, designers. Um, so yeah. yeah, hopefully I can do something here. Um, I was planning to host, um, everything here, Biddle and Hack Adam here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe next year it can happen, um, hopefully. And then Korea, when you fly yeah. to Korea, I'd love to you know, host you and um, hopefully, you know, Dojmos is there in Korea as well. So Dojmos. <laughs> Dojmos is there, June is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, and on, in terms of Hack Adam, we are yeah. actually having a couple of Hack Adams, I think this year. Um, Online, one right? of which is virtual and one of which is in person. Oh. Um, I believe. Mm. So there is Hack Adam 5, the, the sort of bigger event, I believe. Uh, it's a virtual event. I don't have much details on it yet, but it'll be mm -hmm. later this year. Mm -hmm. And um, there's going to be a website and it's going it's to have great rewards mm -hmm. for people who want to hack on Cosmos Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Ethernet will be one of the highlights as well. And I believe Cosmos India is also going to be hosting an in-person Hack Adam. I don't have any details about this yet, um, oh. but we'll have more more to share. Over time. Wow! So they they did plan something in person because they were like you know uh, rolling around this idea about like posting something um, this year, and I was like, yeah, we were discussing about it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, India maybe it's okay if it's local. I think it's okay if it's like if it's a in person flying in type of thing. It may be a little challenging. Yeah, I definitely want to make sure that you know any sort of setup they have in mind is done with social distancing in mind and making sure people have the proper, you know, of course. precautionary measures in place. <laughs> of course, of course.